what's your group name? Spiky Koalas? Spiky Koalas. Spiky Koalas. Okay, I'm just going to circle this. I'm not in the way of the camera. Okay, uh, just bear with me. Let me get comfortable. Okay, fire away, Jim. So this is our pitch proposal to do a music video on a song called If You See My Enemies by a band called The Rubble Bucket. So, our, so this is going to be our artist research, which Tom's going to present. So the two main artists, a part of the Rubble Bucket band, are musical couple Alex Toff and Calvina Traver, who first met at the University of Vermont when they were both doing music majors. They formed the band and it has won a multitude of different awards. And they've also had an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live, which is quite an accomplishment. Um, also, their music has been used in several major sync placements, including a Nintendo Switch ad campaign, which was uh, which which was uh, on the summer of 2016 Super Bowl uh, ad. I'll now flash off to my colleague Cormac Boyden, who will be talking about genre. Hello, I'm Cormac Boyden, and I'm to here to talk to you about genre. Now, when watching the music video by, uh, called If You See My Enemies by Rubble Bucket, I, I got that feeling and noticed that it reminded me of a lot of Indian punk rock from the, the 70s and the early 80s with bands such as Echo and the Bunny Men and the Undertones. So how are we going to associate this into our, well, into our music video? Well, the music video is going to be quite short in general and we're going to use a lot of them um, close-ups with the cameras we're going to be using. Now coming back to um, genre, uh, it was founded in the it, it founded in America and um, indie rock bands tend to do a feature on smaller record labels as they, as they didn't have big, big funds like other, other record labels such as Virgin and uh, other ones like that. So this is how we're going to do it. We'll also use a lot of the clothes wear, uh, worn like in the, with the same bands as well. And then, back in the early 70s, uh, indie rock music came into the UK and a lot of people started performing. That's why it's so big today. I'd now I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Jack, Jack Speakman. So I'll be doing the whole idea proposal on how we're gonna produce it and what we actually want to do for our video. So first, phase which we went through was our brainstorming phase which is where we looked at the lyrics and we also got mood boards so what we tasked our group to do was find our mood boards of listen to the song then go off create a mood board of how you have interpreted the song so some of the lyrics talk about a lawless past so for Tom T's gone with a cowboy theme because back then the law wasn't really entitled for Things like Toby Toby's more focused on the friendship and running away and <coughs> everything. Same with Cormac and then I've gone on to the actual locations of the type of style of locations which I think we should use. So that was part of the brainstorming phase. Then the next part of the brainstorming phase was going through all the lyrics and going line by line marking up, up just shots and ideas of what we want to do for our whole film. So I've gone with some shots of like POV shots so we can really get a sight of our actor's mind and what he thinks. And then that sort of gone down into wider shots and then stuff like there's lines talking about a jail. So we want to do shots like that, which really we're doing it to interpret behind the actual lyrics. That is our whole point of the video. Then the next phase was putting all our ideas together. So we created a group mood board with all of the ideas, what we all thought of. So we've got parts from Toby's mood board, Tom's mood board, and Cormac's mood board. And then we also decided on the lyrics, which we decided to go with on whose idea, which we wanted to do, and then just change them around a little bit to help us come up with the full idea. And then going on to the synopsis slash treatment. So our music video, like I said, is just going to be all based on the lyrics. So when we read the lyrics, we see a meaning behind it. And we're going to produce it by 
going through the lyrics and then tailoring it to what the lyrics mean to us as a group. So our group, we saw it as someone being a bully who's now upset they can't make friends anymore after his past of bullying. So we're now going to tailor it to that bully trying to make friends again. And then we went on to sketching in that images phase. So we kept with our mood board idea to help with the places and style of what we want to do. And then we started doing our storyboard with our shots on the side and then how we want them to look. So for the first two shots, the first two lines talk about a greener place. So we're going to have a POV shot of a greener place. And then the next shot's him going to turn around where it goes with a lawless pass of him punching our other actor, showing that he doesn't care about the law. And then the story will then go on to basically showing how he's now upset about what he did in his past and how he wants to change it. So now I'm going to pass you over with my technique, starting off with Toby, which will then move on to Harry. Okay, so um, for our technique research, I looked at the different camera angles and how they could be trained differently throughout the video to make things seem either emotional, happy, or just in generally just showing off what's in the scene. So the first one, uh, I got an eye level shot because it can show what's happening, what's it facing towards, or the emotion in the face, seeing if it's a sad, happy, or for example in this picture here of Deadpool pointing a gun at the bear, it's showing it's what actually it's pointing at, or something like that. Next one we've got a low angle because it can show that either the dominance of the person, the tallness, so it look, makes them look taller than normal, it could show someone looking up at someone to show that they're younger, they're a lot smaller, or in general it could just show someone looking at the ground, you're at the ground, to make them seem like they're sad. And then obviously the opposite, we've got the high angle to show they're in distress, like Harry Potter here. He's on the ground because obviously something's facing towards him that's going against him and he's in distress, he's powerless, he's weak, he doesn't know what to do because obviously something with more power is overtaking him. And this next one's a close-up, which is usually a close-up on the face, or it could be an object, but on this one it's the face, which is just showing the... Uh, Emotion on the face of obviously here he's uh, smoking and he's got a nice smug face on to show that he's either ready to do something drastic or scared. And then a wide shot just to show what's actually in the shot so it should give you more of an understanding of what's happening. For example, when uh, Gandalf the White went into the battle, it's showing he's on his horse going towards the orcs and it just shows the whole shot to know in the future what's going to happen. Hello, I'm Harry and I'm going to start by telling you about natural transitions. So these are important because it makes the music video flow more and it's less just jarring and cuts and the cuts are less obvious. So the first one is a whip pan. This is when the camera pans very quickly horizontally and cuts on the motion blur, making it a lot easier to cut into the next shot without being as obvious. The next one is a body wipe. That is when the body will walk in front of the camera obstructing it, making it so that when the person has left the shot that you can change the location behind them. The next one is the close up on an object. This is similar to the body wipe, but instead it's an object which covers the camera and you have the same effect with having a new location. Next we have cutting on motion. This is when there's motion in the scene that the audience will focus on and you'll cut on that motion to a similar motion in the next shot and it will be a less obvious cut. And then finally we have the crossing audio or the J cut is when the audio from the next scene starts playing before the actual visuals come up and it just makes the transition more smooth and natural. Next I've got the lens flare. A lens flare is created when light hits the sensor at a different angle which makes the light look more spread out. This can be enhanced by putting a piece of fishing string over the um, camera which makes the light look a bit more big. The lens flare can be used to set up um, an atmosphere or show the power of the light. So that's everything for our pitch presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> okay, so... <coughs>